Everybody, this is Richard, and this is our final session of uh, the City Immortal, um, using Dark Streets and Dark, Darker Secrets as our system. We talked a little bit about it in previous sessions, kind of what inspired this. Uh, so I'm going to jump straight into a review of who our characters are. Uh, Will, who played Julieta, cannot be with us tonight. So uh, we'll be sort of figuring out what happened to Julieta as we go. Uh, but I am going to start uh, with Leandro. Uh, in the middle of drinking coffee, uh, because in Ireland, it's in the wee hours of the morning. Oh, it's terribly wee um, over here. Um, yeah, so I've been playing uh, Victoria Spire um, over the past month. Um, she's the fixer for the... Duchess Morrow, uh, senator uh, that we've kind of been working for, and she is she has a practiced air of of frivolity and pleasure seeking um, that uh, may or may not be affected from time to time. Um, she yeah she's the fixer, so she kind of is the contact point for the underworld or so. Um, she used to be an actress. Um, she has a girlfriend who's a ghost. Um, her acting, one of her oldest acting friends are, is dabbling with supernatural magic and she just threw a wine bottle in his face last session. May have broken up that friendship. Um, yeah, that's Victoria for you. <laughs> just uh, wandering around opening wine bottles and throwing them in people's faces. Well done, Victoria. Was it even uh, open? Had it been well, open? She wanted to open it. Well, it's not, it was open when you finished when you finished throwing it. Um, and next, Maria playing Alistair Featherfield. Alistair Featherfield is uh, the the senator spouse's half brother. Which is complicated, but also the reason why he's doing anything in the city, because he is he's from a noble family, Featherfield, who from the country, and he was sent by his father to make sure shit happens in his favor, which apparently is not, which I'm going to fix hopefully this session. <laughs> And last, but definitely not least, Otto. Hey, everyone. I'm playing uh, Otto van Felten. Uh, Otto is the seer for uh, Lady Hendrika, who's the spouse of Duchess uh, Teresa, who's the senator uh, of the house we work for. Uh, Otto, is, uh, Otto has a, a contact with the... With the uh, uh, unseen world and he's able to talk to ghosts not whenever he wants though uh, he's sort of a medium and um, Otto, uh, initially Otto was on this uh, to save the the house but now he's uh, uh, adventuring to save his boyfriend who was kidnapped by by uh, at least one faction of bad guys apparently everyone is the bad guy in this uh, story or not, or maybe we are the bad guys. I don't know. But yeah, so I'm I'm trying to save my my boyfriend Matthias from uh, uh, Lord Edward and his uh, following of people who apparently are trying to summon a demon. We'll see. Um, let's start with recaps. Just sort of briefly, what happened in the first couple of sessions. And let's start with uh, the person who's sort of stayed apart for most of the first and second session, uh, Victoria. Yeah, there's a reason she kind of stood apart for the first couple of sessions, mainly because she went off uh, the night before the summer festival to just check in on what the actors and what the people preparing are doing for the night out ran into some weird uh, time magic of some sorts, passed out, met with a friend who gave her some very nice swill, 
and decided that <laughs> passing out in strange circumstances shouldn't be a damper on her uh, night and decided to enjoy herself. And she did quite thoroughly and ended up with a massive hangover, therefore missing um, the entire senator's entourage and and speech and all the shenanigans happening in Summer Festival. Instead, she opted to stay uh, in bed in at home with a bunch of salt crackers and <laughs> wine, apparently, because, <laughs> she, because she again met up with her mysterious friend, Roscoe, um, who said a lot of cryptic things and tried his magic bullshit on her again, which she, she managed to tank this time because the dice were nice to me. And yeah, apparently... Spending time indoors having cryptic conversations over wine with old friends was a better use of her time than helping out um, her colleagues who were weathering an attack at the time. So, Alistair, why don't you give a recap what happened to you the first couple of sessions? Uh, I was confessing then. The nun I was confessing to got kidnapped by bad creatures that I didn't see, but we figured that out later. Uh, then I had to, then I talked to my boyfriend to see what the hell was up and not much information gleaned tell us there. About, tell us about your boyfriend again. Uh, singer, I forget his last name, Trevor. He's, uh, the tavern owner of the Blackstream Inn. Uh, so... After that, the next morning went to some, went to the, what's it called? It was just the a, opening was a ceremony. Summer, yeah, it was the opening ceremony of, of Summerfest. Yeah, the opening ceremony of totally not Gen Con, guys. <laughs> Summerfest. Uh, but also, <laughs> uh, so we had, banter with Lord Edward and Lord Edward was being an asshole MAGA type deal in but like fantasy MAGA not real MAGA in like the thing the ceremony uh, he had his cronies stand up and leave at some point when my uh the senator we all work for was talking because he's an asshole like that. Then we got attacked on our way out by thugs do, who had Edward Posse posters planted on them. As in, they were hired to make to make it seem like Edward hired them, but they're not hired by Edward actually. So yeah. Oh, Zhao seems to have left. Which I think Zhao is still listening. Yeah. Uh, so since you were with Julietta for both those first two sessions, tell us a little bit about who Julietta is and uh, what she got up to. Since you were you were also there. All right, Julietta is our muscle scholar. She found out. A lot of stuff. She's not a scholar of muscles. She's just a scholar who's very athletic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> She's an archaeologist who is full. Yes. And she found out that two books of the, the last two volumes of the genealogy of the absolutist monarchy have been stolen as long as the nun. Uh, she also figured out that the conservatives want to bring back the monarchy somehow possibly mm -hmm. it's weird and she I've, and she also helped fight the bad guys by the thugs by tackling one of them well she attempted to shoot one of them first missed and then tackled him And finally, Otto, what happened to you in the first session? Because uh, Otto was not on screen during the second session. So what happened to you in the first session? So in the first session, Otto was having a little moment with his boyfriend, uh, Bishop Matthias. And uh, during that uh, conversation, he discovered Lord Edward was uh, 
involved in purchasing uh, land that used to be an old temple for uh, uh, Tamilus, uh, which is a deity from the old religion. Uh, Otto, Otto is a follower of the old re religion, but uh, Tamilus was not one of the good ones. Tamilus is, is a deity people are afraid of and try to uh, 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 peace. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they try really hard to not be punished by that uh, DD. And uh, yeah, so Otto was, uh, was not in scene during the second session, but uh, on the third session, Otto came back and started investigating this uh, situation. So why don't we go ahead and shift to summarizing what happened to the third session, starting with you, Otto. Okay. So, yeah, so during the third session, Otto and, well, Otto came back to the house to find out the, the senator family had been attacked, or, or, or the senator's entourage had been attacked. Uh, heard all the stories from everyone about the kidnapping of the nun, the books that disappeared. And so Otto and Juliet, Julieta went to investigate the ruin. And they found uh, Lord Edward has a big presence there, lots of tents, uh, lots of people. Uh, they tried to, well, they managed to sneak in. And, and apparently from what they could uh, eavesdrop, uh, there's a ritual, a ritual being prepared. Uh, and Otto saw both uh, Bishop Matthias there, and he seemed to be under distress. And he also saw the nun whose name I forget. Sister Daniela? Yeah. Sister Daniela, yeah, Daniela Pierce. How did yeah. you find Daniela Pierce? Uh, so Julieta created a distraction by uh, releasing a, a car uh, brakes and the car fell down the, the hill. Everyone went, to, everyone went to see it. And while that commotion happened, Otto sneaked in and saw Julieta, uh, well, not Julieta, so uh, Sister Daniela uh, in a tent, and she had the two uh, genealogy books with her, and she also seemed to be under dist under distress. Yes. And that's how that's where the session ended. What do you remember about the third session, Alistair? In addition, uh, yeah. to, in addition to to uh, what. <laughs> oh, <very good. laughs> yeah. While all that was going on, Alistair and Victoria went to see uh, uh, Josephine Chance uh, because Victoria suggested it, even though she refused, she neglected to mention the fact that Roscoe has a grudge against Edward and also has magic, which could have been very relevant was actually very relevant to this situation, but that was fine because we stumbled upon uh, Roscoe and the old friend that had wine thrown to him. And his uh, friend who is some lady, I forget her last name. It starts with a P, I think. It's not in the relationship map, so I can't look at oh, it. Oh, sorry, sorry. I did not put it in, and I forgot the name, so. Some lady that sounded like Bright Bart, but not really. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try so, to look it up real quick. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, she summoned a demon. Roscoe tried to put me to sleep and failed, because, of course, that's his only trick. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing he knows how to do is put people to, to sleep. <laughs> and, but yeah, we resisted that. They ran the fuck away. Uh, like I said, Lady B, she summoned a demon. I had did locked until the police came. Victoria summoned the police uh, like that. And 
And then we decided, hey, this is fucked up, but we should probably check out what the other group is going to because this is probably not going to be resolved anytime soon. And by anytime soon, I mean never because this is only four sessions. <laughs> nice. All right. And finally, uh, Victoria, anything you want to add? Uh, I just want to say that the reason Victoria didn't bring it up is because she didn't expect Roscoe to be at that at that house, and she didn't expect that he'd be relevant in any way to whatever Alistair cared about. So it was it. it <laughs> no, I was wish you to brought it up. It seemed, it seemed extraneous to everything. I don't know that uh, Maria covered uh, the bulk of it. So All right. anything else you guys want to add? And the last name was Pulley. Sorry. Pulley. Pulley. I I thought I could have sorry it start it was longer and started with B, but whatever. B. Shrug. I thought it was pulley. So. Um. Oh, sorry. I was looking at the wrong thing. I can't re read what it is, so. Whatever, she's not relevant anymore, so. We'll call her Lady Burson for now. I remember son was the, was the prefix or the suffix. Yeah, something like that. All right. I'm going to mute something real quick. All right. Um, so we, what were the two of you, Victoria and Alistair, doing at the end of the last session? Julietta had just sort of released the car, causing a distraction. Uh, uh, as uh, mm -hmm. Otto went sneaking off. Yeah, I think we were just standing outside. We were talking uh, to Mad to Madame Chance about sure. the incident, and then we decided to go to the ruins to see what's up with that. I think all four of you got up the hill, right? Uh, we didn't angry. get to the hill. We just okay. got a session there. We just said we were going to get there. Yeah, we did not get to the point where we were all together in, in on screen. I only had this fantasy that you would start a session all in the same place. I know. Right? No. Uh, all right. So I think the two of you get to the hill and uh, you see much of what Julieta and Otto saw before you see the the people at the base of the hill that go up to the that goes up to the ruins and there's a small road um it's kind of loosely paved um the pavement is pretty broken up it's not it's got no curb or shoulder but you know it's there um it's not just a dirt road that goes up to and you see uh, the same sort of big burly uh, guards they saw before. Um, and uh, how are the two of you approaching? What's your, what's your plan? I was thinking of bribing the guards to let us through since, you know, I'm the senator's spouse's half-sibling. Oh, also, two <laughs> recap things. Bishop Matthias, how did you find out that Bishop Matthias was in the little sort of pavilion <laughs> encampment? Uh, he just called Otto uh, Bishop Matthias. No, no, no. I was asking Otto. How did you find out that Otto, Otto that Bishop Matthias was in the, was in the little encampment? Yeah, um, well, as far as I remember, 
when we sneaked uh, into the the camp, uh, thanks to uh, I just remember that that was thanks to Otto's uh, uh, glimpsing the future and being able to see uh, how events would unroll unfold. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw uh, Bishop Matthias with uh, Lord Edward and some other people under a tent, and they seemed to be discussing something. Uh, we couldn't hear it very well because we weren't too close, but we heard them talking about the coronation, uh, a true ruler, a blessing, and a sacrifice, and, a, and also a candidate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but while, the, while they were there, they couldn't hear uh, Bishop Matthias saying anything. It just seemed to be under distress. Right, right. And what about Singer? Uh, Singer, I have no idea. We All we know is that a bunch of people signed with bloody fingerprints on something Roscoe and the lady woman was passing around. It seemed, a, you know, an initially innocuous sort of thing to sign. Uh, but oddly, Roscoe wanted it signed with bloody fingerprints. Uh, there's something to the effect of a petition or something along those lines. I, I, I remember. I wasn't there, but I remember. <laughs> Do you remember what it was? Yeah, so uh, Roscoe had... Uh, uh, a, a sort of a petition uh, and he was asking people to sign them with uh, with like blood from their and their fingerprint right right and that that sounds creepy that sounds like black magic I, I, I know I wouldn't sign any papers like that and you know I would more any suspicious when people summon demons shortly after you refused to sign. Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't, we weren't even offered to sign. We were just attacked. <laughs> you did manage to distract Madam Chance and keep her from signing. Uh, oh, that's good. So, but you did see singers on there, but you have no idea sort of what- oh, I saw singers, singers on there? You saw, you saw singers' fingerprint and name? Wait, I saw the document. Uh, that's where that's where you saw Singer get involved, right? You saw that. No, Singer... I just assumed. I just assumed because uh, the the tavern keepers were were one of the targets of the petition. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, because Singer... Rosk because they were mad with Lord Edward or something. Oh yeah, well, so I just and... assumed that he might be involved. Lord Edward wanted to close public taverns. Uh, and most public amusements. Um, and uh, yeah, Singer was definitely publicly anti-Lord Edward and other conservatives. Um, and uh, yeah, so. So that's no bueno. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, can I bribe this guard? Why don't you uh, tell me what you're saying? What kind of approach? Uh, just approach like I'm supposed to be there, first of all. <laughs> uh, With my, well, what was it that we decided to call Victoria? <laughs> I mean, her mm -hmm. job title at the, at, the, at the manor is fixer, but but like, uh, let's I think just I'm... Oh, go ahead. Like a servant right now. <laughs> For now, yeah. we probably like had a this debate. servant or like, something. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, can I be a valet? That seems like oh, valet. Yes, that that's more, the word. You know? That's the word I was looking for. You would yeah. be a secretary to something like this. A valet <laughs> might stay home, but a secretary. 
All right. Oh yeah, then the secretary. All right. Cool. I will. Uh, I will make it seem like I'm. I'm supposed to be there with my secretary and say. I'm. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, I am. Or what time is it? It's, it's late all. afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I must uh, speak with Lord Edward at once. It is, it is an emergency. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for the emergency, sir, but what is your name? Alistair Featherfield. I'll check the list. And he walks back over to uh, the car. Um, where his companion is hanging out and uh, picks up sort of a note board and kind of glances over it, hands it back and it's like, I'm, I'm very sorry, sir. There seems to be some misinformation. I do not see you on the list. That's why I said it's an emergency. I'm not on the list. I must speak with him immediately. You're specifically on a list of people I'm not to admit. Well then. Uh, how I, many people I, are sure there? Also? <laughs> I'm sure it's nothing personal, sir. Uh, how many people are there? Just two guys? Uh, you can only see two guys. It's a pretty tree. It's a pretty forested hill. So there might be other people in the wood. Oh, okay. Um, there's a clear cut at the top where the ruins are, and there's clear cut for the little road. But well, uh, I'm sure that. Uh, Lord What's the nature Edward? of the emergency and I could dispatch somebody to go talk to Lord Edward? Uh, he has dishonored our, <laughs> the Senate, the Senator, of course. Yes, yes, Lord Edward is a, is a Senator. What's, what, I'm sorry? He has dishonored uh, Senator Morrow. The, the Senator Morrow is also somebody I'm not supposed to admit, sir. Yes, I know because Lord Edward needs to needs to speak with her and apologize. Well, I, I'm <laughs> I, I'm not certain how that constitutes an emergency, sir. I'll show you, and I punch him in the face. <laughs> Why don't you roll? Victoria, what are you doing while this is happening as Alistair rolls physique? I'm, I'm making a lot of concerned faces. I think um, in, throughout this entire shot, as Alistair speaks, Victoria's right behind him. He's making like that. Not me, guys. <laughs> yeah, boys. How'd you do on that roll? I said not 20. Not 20? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, boys. He uh, catches your fist and sort of pushes you back, which, you know, tips you over a root and sends you sprawling. Uh, and several children in the park turn to sort of point and giggle at you, Alistair. It's okay. Their children. And he's I like, I, I'm, I'm very sorry, sir. I did not mean, I did not know that route was there behind you. Victoria, what are you up to? I think I kind of like give a loud theatrical sigh and almost kind of like sidle around Alistair towards the guard and says, okay, look, here's the thing. Um, uh, we're trying to keep up decorum because our, what to put it mildly, we do have 
something of import to say to uh, to Lord Edward. There is an emergency, but we're trying to make sure that panic doesn't spread. <sighs> but I can only the, get what's the experience. nature of the emergency. I, I, I will I will need to send the message because you know Lord Edward won't you know send for you or come down unless you you give me a nature of the emergency. I think uh, Victoria gives uh, Alistair a glance and kind of leans into the garden and says, there is a supernatural conspiracy aimed at Lord Edward. Men and women practitioners of magic that who have banded together. That sounds, that, uh, that, that, would, that would sound dreadfully concerning, madam. I uh, will. There was a demon attack specifically aimed by those people uh, in the, and I named the part of town where Madame Chance was, uh, lives in. <laughs> um. He uh, whistles, and a very tall woman with a gun, you know, a rifle, sort of steps out of the wood, uh, and he whispers something to her, and she uh, sort of takes off at a quick jog up the hill. I'm sure... I'm sure that... uh, We'll uh, have an answer from Lord Edward only momentarily. Oh, I should hope so. This is a grave and serious matter that needs to be taken care of swiftly. Edith will be back shortly. I'm certain. I'm certain of it. Um, up on top of the hill, Otto, you've seen Sister Pierce and the two books of genealogy um, in that tent. She looks agitated and upset. Um, what are you doing? Um, is, uh, is there anyone around the tent like, or like with her or someone who could see me if I go there? Um, no, I think we de- we determined last time it was fairly clear. Um, I mean, if she if she, if you surprised her in in a way that made her call out, that would be that would be bad because you know there aren't people that far away. But if you no one would see you walk into the tent, you, yeah. So you just need to make sure she didn't call for help or anything like that or surprise her. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, okay. Start. You don't want to startle. You wouldn't want to startle her and make her scream or anything like that. Yeah. So I think Otto will be will stay like behind the the like undercover, uh, like out of her field of vision. But he will, he will like say very softly. I, I'm I'm assuming Otto knows uh, this sister. I'm assuming through Alistair, you've met at least once. Okay. Alistair has much to confess. <laughs> okay. Randomly punching people. So, uh, yeah. So Otto will say very, like in a very soft voice. Uh, um, Sister Daniela. And just like wait to see what, how she reacts. Uh, her eyebrows arch and she begins to look around. Uh, I'll say it's, it's, it's Otto Alistair's, uh, friend. What are you doing here? Are you, are you making yourself public? Or I'll, 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 I'll show up maybe. Okay. Yeah, as soon as you step out, she 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 kind of 
Cox driver. She looks surprised, but not like, you know, you announced yourself before you suddenly just were standing there. And she sort of reaches out to you and she says, I, I, I don't know. I was waiting on a confession. And then there was a figure and there were wings and I don't remember much else. And then I was here and Lord Edward, um, told me there was going to be a, an important ritual, um, and that I wasn't to leave. And I asked if I was being detained and he said, yes, it's important senatorial business. Um, and I, I, I know that it's just very odd. He has never been interested in, in the Abbey or the faith before. Um, I, Well, she sort of straightens her, her jacket and she's, but uh, I've come to no harm. I'm just being detained without much of an explanation and was told to review these books. What, what, what have you found? I, 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 I found them quite agitated and have had little appetite for casual reading. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. They're genealogies. It's never been my subject area. Yes. Uh, well, I'm afraid to say uh, the situation is more serious than they convey to you, but I'm here to help you. I, I, why do I need help? Other than the fact I've been kidnapped and uh, I'm being held against my will, um, everything seems to be going fine. They're summoning demons, sister. Remember dark wings? Yes, yes, I, I, I remember the dark wings. I... And waking up in a strange place? Yes, here on the mountain at the old temple. Why would that happen? <laughs> well, I know more than, I, than I'm revealing, <laughs> but let's, let's uh, try to keep you safe first. I, what makes you think I'm in danger? I mean, other than the fact that I've been kidnapped and, and being- that they're, they're considering summoning a demon who's, uh, who's a, a very dangerous uh, deity from the old religion and probably doesn't have a lot of, uh, a lot of time or appreciation for a follower of the new religion who dethroned him or them. I don't think you're safe here. I don't think I'm safe here, to be honest. Well, I appreciate your coming. She looks over at a couple of glasses. She's like, neither the wine nor the tea were poisoned. They're well, not trying. I'm sorry? <laughs> They're not trying to kill you like that. Um, let's say I, I heard a conversation and I heard uh, things about a sacrifice. I'm, I'm, I don't want to startle you, but uh, I'm sure... Uh, well, I'm not sure, but uh, well, thing is they need to perform a ritual. They need a sacrifice and you were kidnapped. That sounds barbaric. It, it, it sounds because it is. Why would and they just me? Well, as I, as I already mentioned, you're a follower of the new re religion. Who, uh, uh, who would be a better sacrifice to bring back uh, one of the one of the deities uh, from the old religion than uh, a follower of a false faith? 
and and then Otto raises an eyebrow and says, "No offense, <laughs> because he's clearly a follower of the old religion too." Um. If you say so, I would prefer not to uh, find out what this demon summoning ritual is like too up close or too centrally. I did see the bishop of the new faith, though. Well, not the, you know, one of the bishops. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, yeah. Well, I'm, we're trying to save him. Too. Well, I mean, I'm trying to save him, too. I don't know where Julieta is. She, I mean, he, he uh, was moving about quite freely. Huh. He looked very worried, but he frequently looks very worried. Has he talked to you about anything? He just told me not to be worried, uh, even though he did not look very convincing when he said it. Well, I'm I'm here for him too. We don't we don't want anything bad to happen. I think they brought him uh, to somehow. Maybe he's another sacrifice victim. Maybe he's uh, just an instrument. They needed someone. To validate this ceremony, uh, as you as you as you know and mentioned yourself, Lord, Lord Edward is not one to uh, follow religions very much. Yeah, well, I'm just, you know, the bishop would certainly never stand by while human sacrifice was being done, would he? Well, I hope not. You begin to hear somebody kind of moving towards the camp, kind of crying, Lord Edward, Lord Edward. Uh, I'll just uh, hide somewhere. Like, I'll, I'll hear where the voice is coming from and I'll go like to the opposite side of the tent and like conceal myself as best as I can. And I'll, as I make a shh to uh, the sister. Nobody seems to be making movement to come in. You hear voices like die down and uh, you hear Lord Edward address someone and then there's comes hush tones and you hear him just laugh. And then he just says, well, tell Maurice that uh, Master Featherfield can approach. Oh. I think uh, 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 I'll, I'll try to see if I can get closer but not too close so I can see what 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 what's gonna happen you're gonna need to make an agility check I think I'm gonna I'm I'm in bad shape but I'm gonna try uh, a little magic first okay I'll try to glimpse uh, the future again oh nice for for just one round I just want to make sure I'll go the right way right so, okay, I'm burning, not burning. I lost one vitality and I need an, a willpower check. check. Uh, and I failed. But, uh, yeah, I failed by a lot. Failed by three. Oh, no. Well, by three, uh, you can test your luck, maybe. Yeah, I'm. I'm Oh no, power and blood, I need to sacrifice before the check, not after. Okay. You can also test your luck to see if you get that four or three on the die roll. 
Actually, you have a level four, four, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, how, how uh, uh, could you remind me how do I yeah, check? You just test it if you get a three or a four. If your luck roll is successful, you can adjust it by an amount up to your, your die roll, physical number by amount up to the die roll. Oh, I see, okay. I rolled a three. Which is exactly what you need. Your luck So that's a critical. <laughs> okay. So I so I roll a sixteen. Well, so I mean I roll a thirteen. That's a success. Yeah. My, my my luck goes down by Your luck doesn't go down. Your luck only okay. goes down if you fail the roll. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. So uh your roll goes down to a thirteen, which is a critical um so let's say for two rounds, or for, for double the normal amount of time. Yeah, that's going to be two rounds. And uh, that means I roll with a positive die. Right. As, as long as I'm following that course of action, which in the, right. in the like sneaking it in closer without being seen. Okay, so now I'll give you my stealth roll, my uh, agility roll. Uh, what's my agility again? 11. 11, yeah, I failed by two. Do you want to test your luck again? again? Sure. What good, good is seeing the future if you're going to see this? I failed. Oh, no. Now it goes down. Your luck goes down? And, yeah, I failed myself. Check my agility check. You uh, get to the edge and you see Lord Edward conferring with a very tall woman uh, who turns around and starts jogging back down the hill. And then he just kind of laughs some more and people start to resume their conversation. And Matthias locks eyes with you. And looks and goes kind of ashen and starts to walk towards you as you uh, motioning for you to go back in the tent where Sister Pierce is. All right. I'll, I'll walk back and see what he wants. Um, He gets called out, um, but he said, I'll, I'll just be a moment. Um, down the hill, the, uh, the woman you saw go off, Victoria, comes jogging back down the hill uh, after about 15 minutes of waiting. Um, and uh, she approaches the uh, man you've been talking to uh, and says uh, Lord Edward says that uh, Mr. Featherfield is to join them at the ruins And I flash a thumbs up to Alistair's direction. I shrug and and I get up and say, well, all right then. <laughs> and she sort of motions for the two of you to proceed up the hill. She sort of walks back to the woods where she was. I tried to give her a wink, but she's already turned her back. Find out. <laughs> you don't need to. <laughs> Alright. So I guess we walk up the hill. Uh, you are. Uh, you tell me. You're walking up the hill. Yeah. All right. Um, 
It's about a six, seven minute stroll up the hill. It's not very tall, but it's relatively steep on this side. Uh, I think I'm going to ask Alistair, so what's the plan? What are we doing here? <laughs> Find Otto <laughs> and Julieta. Okay. We're not doing anything else, right? Unless stuff happens. Oh, if stuff happens, we're stopping it. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> you round the bend to the top of the hill. And you see Lord Edward standing in the middle of sort of the road in, of the Rorns with several of his attendee, like uh, no, his, his lackeys sort of around him. And he, 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 he greets you jubilantly and just says, Mr. Featherfield and company. It is such a pleasure to have you join us. What terrible news are you bringing me now? And let's switch over to that little tent. And Matthias, uh, is ignoring Sister Pierce entirely and looking straight at you, Otto. I'm just like, what are you doing here? I was going to ask the same question. What are you doing here with this crazy demon summoning conservative firebrand? Or if I'm wrong, please tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I can't tell you you're wrong, but but well, I only have a few moments. I, I just you should leave quietly. Why are you helping them? Can you not guess? Here he, he seems to look over your shoulder at the sister. Can you not even imagine why I might be assisting them? Well, the only reasonable thing that comes to mind is that they're, they're, they're going to harm someone and you don't want that to happen, but something in your face tells me that's not it, is it? It is indeed that they were going to harm someone and I don't want that to happen. Don't you think the outcome of summoning a demon will be worse than the harming of one person? We aren't discussing a demon, technically. Yeah, I, I, I guess I guess in that in, in what concerns the old religion, I'm more versed than you, Bishop Matthias. And they're assembling families. Am I wrong? All right. Less a summoning and more an invocation, I think, would be the more appropriate and practical term. Since Samalus does not exist. Otto just rolls his eye. Adhering to this, it seems to have little or no 
effect on the world at large. That's what you think. You, you, you have seen nothing, Matthias, nothing like I've seen. I know there's another world out there. All you do is wear your fancy robes and wave your arms in front of the church so that uh, the politicians are happy with your, your job. I've, I've, I've seen more than this. Yes, you have seen more than this. They have also seen many things, Lord Edward and his colleagues. I bet they have. Yes, they and their spies have seen many things. And from, from, from what I hear, they're trying to seize power in this city. Why would they do that? What have they seen? What they've seen has nothing to do with why they would seize power in the city. Lord Edward wants to seize power in the city because he does not have as much as he thinks he deserves. The means by which they have acquired my cooperation have a lot to do with what they have seen. And what is that, Bishop? Would you like to make a luck roll? What do I have to lose? I know a luck point. <laughs> I rolled a one. Nice. Um, you hear Lord Edward's voice. And you see a shadow in the setting sun start to come around the edge of the tent. Uh, and he's like, Bishop Matthias and Sister Pierce, what have I told you to about socializing before tonight's large event? What do you do? I mean, there's the there's the desk with the with the 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 books on it. There's there's things to hide under. None of them are perfect, but all of them might suffice while no one's paying much attention. Yeah, I, I guess I'll I'll sneak under. Uh, yeah, I'll sneak under the desk. I was going to be more, more, uh, I, I'm, I'm in rough shape. I'm just going to do this. It sounds safer. <laughs> um, it won't take much um, to do that. I mean, you have time, thanks to your successful look check. Um, and you're really just hiding behind a thing that already exists. Um, and uh, you get under the desk. And uh, you see both of their feet turn. Matthias, what have I told you about talking to the candidate before the right? Sister Pierce, you, see, you appear not to have cracked the books I, I left for you. Did you not, did you not enjoy them? And uh, they continue to talk. Uh, she sounds nervous. Matthias sounds very, very nervous. And uh, Otto is very, very nervous too. <laughs> Uh, 
Matthias leaves first. Lord Edward continues to encourage Sister Pierce to read the genealogies. And uh, and he's, he's, he's quite He's quite, what's the word I'm looking for? He's quite sort of, not accommodating. He's, a, he's almost cloyingly kind to her, deferential. Insistent, but patronizing, but deferential at the same time. Um, the way his lackeys are, are, are deferential to him, but patronizing the way he is to them. Um, and finally, he says, we'll, we'll be starting just as the sun dips below the horizon so shortly. The two of you see Lord Edward uh, As you, as you crest the hill, and he laughs, he's like, Mr. Featherfield, what is this news you're bringing me? I look at Victoria, and I look back. Uh, nothing important, except that you insulted my <laughs> insulted my what was it aunt my be, aunt would be the aunt would be wife. the you know the the passing aunt or cousin would be aunt or cousin <laughs> yes whatever <laughs> um, oh Senator Morrow, yes. Yes, that's not news though. I intended to do that. I did it on purpose. It is important that we take for a stand purpose? for things we believe in. And what do you believe in? I'm, most, I'm nudging at Victoria to like, to something. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in I think I have a send like a, uh, what are you expecting me to do? I believe in the end of the upstart dukes and duchesses who came to prominence when the kings fell. And I believe the return of the monarchy. But you know these things if you've been paying attention and reading the papers. Oh, no, 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 I'm not the electoral monarchy, that abomination. The real monarchy. Which is the real monarchy, if I may ask? The ones we had before we got rid of it. The one that's hereditary, in which power passes through the blood. The ones where they literally consecrated themselves as gods. All right, cool. Uh, as was acknowledged by both the old and new religions at the time. At the time, yes. Uh, Victoria, would you care to inform, to let him know? <laughs> So there is actual news? News as far as you're concerned, yes, Lord Edward. Uh, tell me, do you believe in magic? I, of course, I believe in magic. Everyone has seen magic happen. By the way, I'm going to look around and, and try to notice something out of place or if I see Otto or Juliet or anyone while Victoria is doing something. <laughs> 
Um, I, I, I do believe in magic. I am a contemporary citizen of the Imperium. And a senator. I am not prone to absurd statements. So yes, yes, I believe in magic. Well, would you believe then, Lord Edward, that there is a conglomerate of people in the city who wish to do you and you specifically harm through the means of magic? It is a risk of being a truth teller, Ms. Ms. He looks Spire. Confused. Spire. 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 Yes, Ms. Spire. It is a risk of being someone who believes in telling the truth that people will want to kill you. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Featherfield? And then I, I look at, uh, oh, uh, yes, uh, telling the truth, like, what's up with this? Um, you don't really see much around. You see several pavilions. You see people starting to go into them. Um, and people are clearly setting a large table. Um, and uh, they've clearly been roasting a, uh, a boar. Like for some period of time today on the, on the edge of the camp. Uh, and they are setting a table out. Um, And there's there's two thrones on either side of it, but that's that's pretty much all you see is people seem to be busy setting up some sort of table. So, you're, what's up with this picnic? <laughs> One, why why you go over the trouble of buying a. Uh, Temple grounds for a misly feast that you that you didn't even invite me. You said you said specifically to not invite me. Well, you know, I was feeling petulant after this morning, and I didn't want to have to hear you moan about how I offended your cousin, the Duchess. <laughs> well, you heard you heard it anyway, so there you go. Yes, yes, I heard that there was important. Ms. Spire, do you have information about a specific relevant threat? Well, the ringleaders of this threat did sick a demon on us. So I'm not particularly keen on protecting them. They've been... Wild and undisciplined practices of magic among the most degenerate portions of this city are one thing that I cannot stand. I appreciate you bringing this threat to my attention. Who brought the demon? Uh, I think Victoria gives it a thought. She nearly would have given it out, but then he started spouting nonsense and had a second thought. But then just thought... <sighs> Like if she didn't sick the demon, we probably would have could have been friends. So <laughs> uh, she didn't summon the demon and assume things. We could have, we could have, we could have, we could have you know, had a nice brunch and talk things over. But no. So Victoria is also feeling petulant, and she says, uh, "A lady person you might interest your eye." She summoned a demon. I wouldn't it's pretty have common these days, after all, there was a demon summoned at Monolith Abbey just two days ago, yesterday? Last night. Last night? Yeah, last night. It sounds like she's more interested in you than, than, than me. What makes you think she intends to 
interfere with me. I mean, this is very concerning. I do not want to diminish that. An attack on one senator's household is an attack on the entire Senate and deserves to, no matter what differences the Duchess and I may have. Well, it was the Dang extended... Ra- oh, go on. Didn't you say Remember? that the Senate should be dismantled or something? No, I think the absolute monarchy should be restored, but there was a Senate even during the absolute monarchy. Oh, I see. Who else well, there was lies the king? Yeah, who else would advise the kings? Who else? Well, to answer your question, Lord Edward, there was the extended rant lady person um, graciously um, um, let us witness about the power of certain corrupt conservatives. There is also the leanings of her dear comrade at arms, Mr. Roscoe McLaughlin. Uh, is that a name I should know? No, no, it's more, it's more a name I, I need to say with ven- practice saying with venom these days. You know how it is. Old friends try to practice magic on you without your consent. You get irritated. They spout nonsense about bringing down the Senate. They try to pull that trick on you again. You throw a wine bottle at their face. It's all very terribly complicated. Really. This sounds very common. Who is Roscoe Glocklin? Not a man of the arts, I see, Lord Edward. It's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. He's... I follow music, literature, philosophy. Nothing as vulgar as theater, then, I assume. I hope that the Fakil Kings will outlaw the theater as soon as they resume the throne. Which is... What, what are you talking about? <laughs> like to stay for the supper ritual. Ritual? Master Featherfield. What ritual? Well, you know, but, you know a proper supper is, is much a ritual. An act of reverence and worship for the way things have been done. All right. (laughs) You look tired, Mr. Featherfield. Would you like to freshen up in a tent? I suppose you don't have a proper dinner shirt or jacket on you, do you? Mm, No, you're right. Then we will provide you with one. You're about the same fit. As my nephew? And he is a clothes horse, so we will uh, make sure you uh, find something that would be appropriate evening wear. He gestures you towards a tent. These are pavilion tents. They're clearly not overnight staying in tents. A few of them have like cots or chairs All right. for lying down, but not, these are, these are not overnight tents. These are, these are shade and privacy during the day. All right. Tents. I go towards the tent. He motions me towards. Ms. Spire, is that correct? <laughs> I think uh, Victoria just kind of like just not in a a far too deferential manner. It has been a pleasure speaking with you, Miss Spire. If you would like to stay for dinner, there is an associate's table being set over there. Any gestures? Well, how can I deny myself the scintillating conversation happening around your entourage? I'd happily stay for dinner. 
Thank you. And thank you for this bit of news. I will okay. the Victoria bows at that. And we'll saunter off to the associate's table. Back in the tent, you were under a desk after Lord Edward left to have this conversation. What are you doing? I'll, I'll crawl back uh, from under the desk and I will look at uh, the sister Pierce is still here, right? Yep. I'll, I'll carry her and say, I think I got it all wrong. And then I'll rush to the genealogy book. It's flipping around, but you can, yeah. Yeah, I'll try to find uh, what, uh, details on her family like as quick as I can. Like I'll start from the from the end and I'll try to see like and and, and like while I flip through the book I'm 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 gonna like casually ask her, you don't you don't know if you have any like nobility like noble blood in your family like might be a while uh, might be a while back, do you? She sort of cocks her head and she says, you know, when we join the church, we give up our titles and positions. Yes, I know, but uh, remember the ritual? I, I think they're trying to bring someone with, uh, with the king's blood back to power. That sounds absurd. Yes, my, I know it sounds absurd, help me. My grandmother had ties to one of the ducal houses. She married a lesser dress fall. <sighs> All right. In in the meantime, am I able to find anything in the books or, or are they like as thick and hard to navigate as I imagine they would be. Um, make an intellect check. And this is sure. more about the time it takes. Right. I think my intellect is not too bad. Uh, oh. Right, I rolled a one. Perfect. All right. Uh, since I didn't set it difficultly for that, that would be, that's fine. Um, so it's it's not too long. It's maybe about 10 minutes. Um, that uh, uh, you're able to find some of the Pierce family uh, through her grandmother's name. She actually has several points of connection back to lesser children of the royal family at several points. Um, you know, there's a, there's a connection to grandchildren of the last, the last monarch before the monarch was dismissed or toppled, uh, but also connections to, uh, to uh, three generations back. And again, for about five generations back, there are connections in the family tree. Uh, that uh, you can identify after talking, talking with her and looking at the, the genealogies. Um, if the monarchy were still extant, uh, she would not have priority uh, in the line of succession at all. You know, I'm not sure she would even clear the top 20. Mm -hmm. uh, but you suspect they have researched other options. She was probably the easier to kidnap. <laughs> uh, or one of the few surviving. Uh, True. After the, after the fall. Um, and she, she starts protesting. She's like, but, but the, 
the royal families had to give up their, they had to, to, the surviving members of the royal family had to promise they would not seek the monarchy again for themselves or their children. That would be just absurd. Well, I, I don't think Lord Edward agrees with that. Have you, have you heard his politics? <laughs> like, are I, you talking to man? As a member of the faith, I have sworn to stay politically neutral and to not concern myself with the partisan politics of the Senate. Yeah, I guess you did. Well, lucky you. But now you're in danger. And I'd like to emphasize, yeah, you're in danger. You might think this is bullshit, but... How am I in danger? I don't understand what's going on. Well, I'd say maybe the the entire uh, uh, city is in danger, and you are an important piece to execute their plan. And you, uh, as far as I know, you have no part on it. Like you just said, you 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 don't want to be involved with any politics. You you swore an oath and everything, right? I I did I did. So are you gonna are you gonna stay here and commit this uh, terrible uh, sin under the the eyes of your gods? Where would you suggest I go? Oh, uh, Otto will, when she asks that, Otto will raise his hand and then he will close his eyes and try to see through the eyes of uh, Dusk again to see if there's a, a, a way, uh, like somewhere, like from the sky, if he can see there's like a place where he, they could sneak together, like with the least guards and, yeah. Um, why don't you make that willpower check? Sure. Apparently, I rolled a one again. Right. Well, well, if the difficulty is above one, then I'm. Yeah, it won't be because it's the you were only casting it at at a power level one. Well, this is a this is a class. Uh, oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I, I can I can see through his eyes, but I can talk to him telepathically. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, sorry, I thought you were doing the the fate thing again. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, and what's your familiar's name again? Dust. Dusk. Yeah. Uh, while I think I am going to Switch over and see what Victoria is up to. Yeah, so I've been directed towards the associates table. Uh, You can see where people are, you know, who are clearly not getting into evening wear are uh, cleaning up. Uh, like getting ready for dinner, even though they, you know, not given evening wear to wear. What's kind of the conversation coming from them? Like, they don't really recognize you. Why don't you, uh, 
Well, I do something real quick. They're pretty standoffish. Uh, would you like to see if you can overhear something? They're, they're pretty brusquely standoffish to you. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll, well, I've tried to make myself as, uh, against my instincts, as kind of like as not noticeable as possible. Yeah, I'll do that. As you sort of blend it, why don't you make an agility check? Okay. All right, so Jody's 14, I wrote a six. Before some of them notice that uh, you're standing close by, you do hear them say that tonight should change everything. Uh, A few of them talk about how pompous Lord Edward is. Uh, and a few of the other minor aristocrats in attendance are also uh, referred to as pompous. These are all people who are at the level Alistair claimed you were at, people who are you know, essentially um, secretaries by reference to the turn of the century version of secretary, who is someone who's pretty much always with you kind of more of a, almost of an attache except for mm -hmm. not a not a not not assigned to a diplomat um, yeah. um and they're they're cleaning up um and then the uh You do hear something about um, young Lord Dressfall, which based on the way they're saying it would imply this is a younger Dressfall no, uh, aristocrat in the, the, the house of Dressfall. Um, and then several other young lords being or, or ladies being referred to. Um, Ears perk up at the name dressed fall. Um, Can I figure like, who's saying all this? Or is this just, just general what I'm getting? You see a, a, a red haired woman, very stern looking, uh, referring to Lord Dressfall and uh, how annoying he is. But he is an apt pupil, she says. All right. Um, geez, I know we, have, we came here to do other stuff, but I think um, I'm going to loudly exclaim <laughs> apt. He is no more apt than a raven is to uh, being a writing desk. Uh. And she turns to you and her eyes sort of narrow and she walks up to you. Do you think I don't know who you are, Ms. Spire? And that I don't know about your visit to the house to inquire about someone a few years back or about your history in the house's service. And this is all very low. This is all very low. Pretty much just a few inches from your ear. I think uh, my heart can quicken. And I force myself to say back, well, if you know all that, then 
She must know that. The only way of ensuring I stop being a pest is to send me to wherever the hell you sent Rosemary to. And she sort of looks at you. I hope you'll see her sooner than you expect. <laughs> and she reaches out and half swats, half pats your hand. And then walks away. I'm so upset, like right now, <laughs> just like in general. <laughs> this is both me and Victoria being really upset. Um, do you need me to adjust anything or? No, no, no. I'm just saying. It. I'm just saying. Like, uh, no, no. <laughs> this, this is not like that. I need to just anything upset. It's just me being theatrical about what. <laughs> it's fine. um. Your luck goes up by one. Oh, thanks for that. I think um after that I'm just gonna like oh, well. If she wants me to be all adventurous and getting into scrapes where I might join Rosemary then fine and I think I'm going to try and I'm not going to join the rest of the soldiers for dinner I'm just going to try to snoop around okay um, Alistair yes there's a couple of very very busy valets who are sizing up people with jackets and getting them into their evening shirts uh, and uh, they give you a hanger for the shirt you have on and uh, hold out a jacket and a shirt with white tie. This is a white tie dinner. What uh, does white tie mean? That is the, for, for menswear, that is the, the highest level of formality. It usually involves coats with long tails and uh, ties that are the same color as the shirt. Outside? A white tie? <laughs> uh, no, I say that a lot. A white tie? Dinner. And then... Outside. A very, very strikingly handsome young man comes up right behind you and smiles at you and says, Oh, well... You know royalty and their demands. What royalty? And he sort of cocks his eyes and smiles at you conspiratorially. Oh, indeed. What royalty? Ah, uh, he hands out. He's like, I don't believe we've met. I'm Ludwig Dressfall. Uh, hello, uh, my, and I, I guess I offer my hand up Alistair Featherfield. Wow. Mr. Featherfield, I do hope that we will be seated close to each other. I find you a most striking conversationalist. Over, you were trying to figure out how the hell to get out of here as people were gathering for dinner. Um, and uh, there was a crow scanning things out for you, correct? Uh, Otto? And you're muted, right. sorry. Yeah, I, 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 was, uh, I zoned out, sorry. Oh, that's okay. So you can see, you can either, in the fading light, you can either try to go down the hillside directly, which is craggy, 
uh, and will involve a lot of hopping around from ledge to ledge in the in the dark. Uh, in daylight, it would be it would be exhausting, but not terribly difficult um, to go down. Um, Or you can try to kind of scramble your way for both of you through the camp and go down the main road if no one sees you. Right. I guess the... Or you can hide in the woods. Yeah. Hide in the woods is definitely the simplest. Yeah, I, I guess I guess we'll try to hide then. It sounds like the best thing to do. Why don't you make an agility check? Sure. I'll give you advantage there too, because you have a, a crow scouting out ahead of you above. All right. Um you're, you're going to just one spot too. You're not it's not like you're yeah, I, I rolled a nine and a two, so I guess the nine. Yeah. Uh, you can sort of walk straight out of the tent into a small copse of trees, and uh, from there you can sort of just sort of kind of edge your way back. And uh, she'll go with you. Okay. Yeah. So, well, yeah, we'll try to find uh, a safe spot. And um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if I should stay with her or leave her, I guess, like if they they all go around trying to find her, they'll eventually do it. So, well, let me uh, check the description for a spell I have here. I know what I'm gonna do, so, uh, yeah, I, I I find this place in the forest, like as as deep as I can go, not too, uh -huh. like as long as it doesn't take too long, and then uh, Otto's gonna fall on his knees and start tracing runes on the floor, and he's uh, uh, he's invoking the ghosts of all the all the victims to uh, all the victims of Samalus to haunt this place and basically what I, what I, what I want to do is I, I want to make the forest well at least it's a medium area I think that's what the spell says mm -hmm. yeah no an area of up to medium distance yeah I don't know how much that is but medium <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, if, if you're, uh, I don't know if you're looking for that. I'm looking at it right, yeah. Yeah, page 97. 97. Uh, yeah, so basically what I want to do is I want to invoke these ghosts so that like if anyone comes looking for her, I'll have the the upper hand. Uh, yes. Because they're, like anyone who gets here is going to have a negative type to try to do anything. But it's more, it's also like I'm casting the spell also as a, like, for for the, I guess, the, like, emotional effect of having ghosts around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think it's going to, uh, like, I think a lot of people will be like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> and are you centering this on the the high table? No, I was going to do it like uh, after we ran like around 
like just to protect the area where I mean, you you were kind of going to where you could still see the the camp though, right? Right. Yeah. So, do you want to center on the high table? Do you want to do it in another part of the camp? Do you want to do it in the woods? Because it's going to a, it's going to a, kind of affect a medium sized area around that area. Mm -hmm. So, I just kind of want to get a sense of what the what the focal point will be. Right. Um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna cast it like uh, uh, at the tent. So like, like when people come looking for her, that's what they're going to see, like all these ghosts. Nice. And I'm like to make sure it's going to work, I'm going to try to cast it for like three hours. So let's make that difficulty two, three vitality cost yeah and uh yeah i'm gonna sacrifice some of my attributes okay to make it easier to cast you're kind of getting yourself kind of worn out there aren't you i have like i i have a plan b but the plan b is very bad <laughs> okay so i'm gonna pay my oh, my what am i doing this was 14. It's, but it's, you pay physic and agility. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, pay, let's see, my bull power is 13. I'm gonna take one point each from agility and physique. Nice. So now my bull power is 15 for the effect of this spell. Why don't you go ahead and make that willpower roll, and then we're going to cut. All right. Whew. Yeah, that's a 12. Nice. And Otto is in really bad shape now, but uh, the ghosts start wailing. Victoria. You were sneaking around and instead of joining people at the dinner table. Yeah. Where are you going? And what are you up to? Um oh, sorry. I'll check that. Uh I was going to try and actually look for Otto and Julieta, who <laughs> that's where we're meant to be here to try and find. I assume no one would care if I'm missing from the associates dinner, so I was just trying to see where they could be. You get sort of away from things, and I think you spot Otto. As a you see him what does your magic look like, Otto? Otto uh, crouches on the on the ground and mm -hmm. starts describing room uh, around himself while he chants in a in a droning voice. And you see Otto doing this, and clearly about to finish. You don't see Julietta anywhere. Um, yeah, I, th I think I just, I just saw a familiar face and I'm going to try and make my way towards him. Okay. I mean, that's go ahead and make an agility check. Okay. What, is your, one. what is your profession, by the way? Um, my profession, the one that I took for the other one is entertainer. That's okay. Uh, yeah, so that's just, yeah. Mm, one second. Mm. 
you start to move away and you hear someone yell, oh, good God, woman, use the privy, not the woods. Turn to see where is this coming from? The same redheaded woman who was talking to you earlier. Uh, is she? Who, do I see who she's shouting at? You. Oh. Uh, as you head into the way you were about to head into the woods. I think I kind of like shout back. Well, you know me, uncouth in every way. I'm, I'm kind of as I'm backing into the woods and making jazz hands. I guess. Um, She rolls her eyes and sort of looks away. Let's kind of angle my body so she doesn't see Otto. She As wouldn't I'm be able can. to really see Otto from where she is right now. Mm-hmm. Ah, but she knows I'm in the woods. Oh, lovely. I think I'll take that risk. And you're moving mm-hmm. towards Otto? Yep. Alistair. You see Bishop Matthias finish something up around one of the thrones, like he was pouring water in a circle around it or something like that. Um, And meanwhile, I'm still talking to Big Dressful. He's walking forward and he's just like, he finds his name on the table as he is talking to what are you what are you talking about wait uh i thought I, we were still in the dressing room oh he's he's it, it's not a lot it's, it's not like a huge encampment so he's just sort of, oh okay i'm like uh, he's walking forward what are you talking about can you please at, at least be honest with me and tell me what the fuck this ritual is about It's like, of course, of course I can. Come this way. He, he goes, he finds uh, his sort of nameplate on the, at the dinner table and sort of moves it over next to yours. He's like, let's, let's sit down. All right, I sit down. He sits next to yours, just like, there you know. When the old kings abdicated, they made them make a whole lot of promises. And you really can't break promises without the help of a god, can you? Not those kind of promises. So... We're going to get them out of those promises. And that's when Lord Edward taps his glass and Lord Edward is seated. So like I said, there's a long table with thrones on each end. Uh, One throne does not have many chairs near it. Um, And one throne has several chairs near it. Um, The throne with the chairs near it Lord Edward is seated at the right hand of that throne. All right. Uh, And he sort of nods. Um. As you see, two of the security guards go to two different sort of tents in the pavilion area. Um, And the first one sort of leads out a woman that you quickly realize is Julieta, and she's being let out clearly at gunpoint. They're not even trying to hide it. Uh, uh, 
And they're heading her towards that large throne that has no chairs around it. Um, and then... you begin to hear screaming um, coming from the group and they, they all run out uh, quickly as a, a howling starts to rise from that other tent. Um, and Lord Edward stands and turns and starts to pull a pistol out of his jacket. Uh, that is when he, I'm gonna throw a knife at him for being a traitor to the Senate. And I, and I do say, you are a traitor to the Senate. And then I fucking yeet a knife at him. Let's take a 10 minute break on that cliffhanger right there. And uh, we will be back. Uh, in 10 minutes. I'll see y'all then. All right, we are back. Let's make an agility check for that knife throw, and then we'll switch scenes to see what's going on. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, does spouses have sibling count because I'm trying to defend the honor of the entire fucking Senate? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. That, uh, thank if you it for wasn't listening. the finale series, I would, right, uh, so the series finale, I might, I might, I might wonder about that. But I think, yeah, yeah, uh, that's a seven, which is under my agility of ten. Roll d six. Uh, do I add the plus one? No, that's melee damage. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Six damage. <laughs> One moment. It cuts along the stark white shirt um, of Lord Edward and opens a very red gash as he turns to you with perfect personal control and says, betrayer to the true kings. Um, over in the woods, the screaming has started, and then more screaming started. What's everyone doing? And the light is getting yes. dim. So I see Otto now, right? I'm with him. I think I kind of look at him and it's like, oh, I haven't seen you in a while. You look poorly. Are you okay, Otto? <laughs> Otto is like... <sighs> My my powers requested a lot of my vitality, but I'm I'm okay for now. Uh, yeah, maybe don't spend any more of that. Um, you're kind of and she looks around. You're kind of important to a lot of people, Otto. You don't don't you know that? I know, but what's happening here is more important. I uh, I found what they call the candidate. She's the and I guess their candidate heir to the throne that they want to restore. And uh, well, I've hit her in the woods, but they, they might be after her. You, I'm, the woman sorry. you're with has the haircut of a priestess, like the, the close crop, almost shaved haircut of a priestess, but she's wearing an evening gown. Uh, not quite as formal as the white tie would suggest but possibly what they could get together for her. 
Okay, all right. So you're telling me if this woman's the key to kind of all this, and if she's not here, um, if she's not here, then it all kind of falls apart, right? That's what I hope. And that's when you hear, okay. traitor to the Senate, in Alistair's voice, and then traitor to the monarchy, in Edward's voice. Oh, trouble shit. starts to erupt. Oh, shit. Alistair's done something. Okay. Uh, um, are there ghosts screaming? They're not near the camp where all, the, where all of Alistair's nonsense is happening, right? People are definitely screaming in the pavilion. And uh, panic is breaking out. Um, okay. All right. Uh, I gotta turn to. But is is the the lady with us, or is she hidden somewhere else? She is right there with you, I believe. Okay. All right, um, ma'am. Although you might need to turn around, but ma'am, I need you to take off your gown. Uh, and Victoria is taking off her. Can I make our coat as well? Like we're gonna, you two need to get away. I'm gonna try to buy you some time and hopefully try and get Alistair out of this mess. Um, we're gonna need to switch clothes. Uh, uh, all right. Does this Pierce say anything about this plan? <laughs> Otto, Otto looks and like, he knows Victoria, <laughs> like, like this is this is Victoria do, doing it herself at his at her best. <laughs> Alistair, I would like you to make an agility check at disadvantage to see if these people next to you can apprehend you. Uh, they can. Well, actually, I can test my luck. Uh. Fuck. Uh, that is a critical by testing my luck. <laughs> um, or actually, it would be either the critical or the eight, whichever one you prefer. Oh, that's right. Let's call it the critical. Which way do you flee? Ah. Uh, I don't know where anyone is, so I'll go to... Back to the word, into the pavilions, into the woods. Uh, back to the road and hopefully... Well, actually... I know there are guards in the woods, so... Like, I'm trying to think of what Alistair would think, and I think I would go into the road, actually. Okay. Just straight down the road? Yeah. Let's have this changing of clothes happen at a dramatically appropriate pace. Because <laughs> uh, Alistair has is, is, is gotten some distance away. Um, but now there's howling ghosts pretty much all over the banquet as Lord Edward is shouting for control and calm and apprehending people. And then seems to mention Alistair, but like, let the fool run. And we proceed as planned on schedule. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, Victoria? Yeah, I think at this point we've exchanged clothes. <laughs> um, I think I've uh, I think I've pulled out a knife and I've tried to hack as much of my hair out as possible. Um, and then I, I, I think it took Otto and it was like, all right, uh, you, Otto, are poorly. You need to get away. I'm going to buy some time and find where Alistair and Julieta are. Um, 
just the main thing is you and this uh, lovely uh, uh, sister um, uh, get out of here as quickly as you can. Well, you take you take care of yourself uh, as best as you can. Let's all do our our jobs. And he <laughs> looks to, Otto looks to uh, uh, the sister and like, are you ready? She takes your hand, Otto, and uh, heads. Are you heading back towards the road? I think we're going, if we go through the woods, or are we going to end at the other side of the hill? You said it's not too big of a hill? It's not too big, but it is kind of craggy on the sides. Right, yeah. Hmm. Almost like it was deliberately, you know, kind of set up that way. Like they kind of took the hill and sort of carved away. Right. Well, I guess no one has seen me yet, so they're not looking for me. And they're not looking for uh, Victoria because now Victoria is with me. <laughs> so I'm just I, I'm gonna walk like uh, in a, a like at a hurried pace, but not run, and just try to like uh, take profit of the, the the mess that's going on uh, to sneak through the camp again and and get to the road. Victoria. What are you up to? What are you doing as you come out of the woods? I think my main, what I'm, what I'm mainly trying to figure out is where Julieta is. And maybe Julieta Alistair. is he standing ran. at a table at a very large throne with no chairs around it. It looks like it has a circle of some sort kind of etched around it very loosely. And she's sort of like in cuffs at gunpoint being sort of positioned at the table. Everything is a lot in chaos as Lord Edward is trying. There's weird ghostly shapes flying everywhere. Um, Lord Edward is shouting for control. You don't see Alistair anywhere. Um, Lord Edward has a deep gash. How many guards are on Julieta? Uh, two, both with guns. Um, oh, lovely. Hmm. And you're just, everybody's like, where... Where's the candidate? Where's the candidate? And everyone's yelling for the candidate. Yeah, I think. Um, let's check. I think I. I think I want to kind of stumble in the woods and I see all that. And here, where's the candidate? Um, oh man, does she even look anything like uh, Sister Pierce? It is getting dark. <laughs> it is getting dark. She's an actress. Victoria can kind of pull. You hey, had a hmm, no. list. You were born to do this. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think. Yeah, I kind of come out looking bedraggled and like shook. Uh, to say uh, that. Oh, uh, these, these. I think um, all these ghosts are. Uh, Coming out, and I'm kind of like, ah, I tried to act like I was kind of ran from the pavilion. Actually, I, I'm the... gonna, I think I need you to make a, a willpower check. Oh, okay. Because of them ghosts. Okay, that's a three in my willpower is 11. You're kind of keeping it together. Yeah, I'm trying to look like yeah, I'm trying to keep it look like I'm keeping it together, but I'm literally I'm also keeping it together. <laughs> so it's not really an act. So what so what's your give me a one sentence summary of your plan? Um or what are you planning to do? Immediate my term, not like, you know, big picture, but just like immediate what are your actions? Well, 
what I want is in this chaos to be kind of to kind of free Julieta and maybe take a box shot of Lord Edward, but I'm not really sure how I'll accomplish that in this mess. So what I'm gonna do is like I'm I'm just gonna like act like um I I think I do need to get close to Julieta, so I'm going to act like uh I ran a pavilion uh, but I'm back and I'm just barely keeping it together and try to like carry myself like a, like sister pierce why don't you make an intellect check at advantage cool oh wow one of them is a four and one of them is a one uh difficulty would be two so the four is your best mm -hmm. uh, sister pierce uh, where are you going? Where are you walking to as people turn to look at you? Uh, I'm walking towards, I guess, to the front, to near to the two thrones. Oh, no, two thrones. The two thrones uh, are the opposite side of the table from each other. It's a long oh, table. Oh, okay, okay. Right. One throne at each end. And Juliet is on one side of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm going to chance my way towards her. Um, in the fading light mixed with candlelight, your your face is not directly illuminated. In amidst the panic and the ghosts flying everywhere, um, and. Uh, Lord Edward moves towards you. And uh, says, Sister, uh, reaching out for your hand. The, your throne is on this side, gesturing to the other throne. I think I give him a stiff smile and say oh, of, of course lord edward how foolish of me and i'm going to walk near him and um so i have a trick pistol in my as of my weapon oh yeah <laughs> yeah uh i'm going to try and grab a chokehold on him and point this pistol at his head Take him hostage. Is that yeah, every, things are a little bit in chaos, so it may take a while to, for people to notice you have him hostage. I just need like the guards near Julieta to notice. I don't need everyone. I'm going to have you make an agility check. Would you normally have advantage at this for any reason? Um, I think maybe the advantage is that he thinks I'm Sister Pierce. I'm so, so you're gonna roll normally because normally you'd be at disadvantage for the for the chaos and the ghost. Okay. Uh, just okay. Uh, agility fourteen. I rolled a nine. Nice. Well done. Uh, you get the pistol out and have it pointed at Lord Edward's head as the ground begins to shake. Otto and Alistair, you rendezvous on the road with Sister Pierce, uh, wearing Victoria's clothes. Alistair? Uh, I suppose I recognize her since I know what, who she is. Yes, yeah. All right. Oh, good, you're fine. Uh, Otto, uh, what's going on? Uh, where's Victoria? Where's Julieta? Well, Victoria's here, as you can see. No, I'm sorry. This is uh, Victoria and uh, the sister uh, traded clothes. Victoria is, is uh, stayed back to buy us some time so we could escape. Uh, and your your favorite sister is heir to the, the throne. 
and that's why we're running away. Uh, okay, trying... you keep running away. I'll go grab the other two. And I guess that's the plan. The ground starts to shake. Okay, Ada, do, keep, just keep moving, keep moving. We'll we'll solve this later. Or I uh, will solve this. Just keep moving. Get get Daniel out of here. Okay. I'd like all of you to make an agility check. I failed. Okay. I crit. Nice. Yeah, it failed as well. Okay. Uh, you go before anyone else does, Alistair. All right. Uh, beeline for the uh, back to the banquet hall, I guess, or the banquet it's picnic thing. <laughs> picnic table with thrones in it because Lord Edward couldn't be asked to make up for an actual formal event properly. All right. Um, uh, so you're, you're running up to it. What do you want to do once you get there? Uh, so I, I see Victoria and I see Julieta, right? Yeah. Uh, they're not very far from each other. They're at that one side with the throne that didn't have any chairs around it that, that you saw Matthias place a circle around in, like, water. All right. Uh, I'm going to engage the guards that are on Julieta. So, or, like, tackle them, actually. I'm going to tackle them. So you can tackle one. They're kind of spaced out so that, you know, on I'm either side of her. I'm going to tackle one. Nice. Okay. Uh, make a physique check. Yay. Difficulty one. one. Fuck. That's a one. Which also means it's a critical. Uh, roll a d6 and add two to it. That's a five total. So I think you, uh, you, uh, hear the gun go off and you try to keep moving forward and you realize you're moving like in slow motion, having just been shot for five vitality damage. And you realize you're bleeding a lot. I. Uh, as you, the guard you tried to grab, you actually like panicked and like shot, and it hit you. Uh, almost on that, like no planning was in this. Like the the guard just shot you, just shot because you grabbed him, and then it hit you. And now you're bleeding. Yeah. I'd like you to make a willpower check. Oh boy. Uh, 10, that under my 12. You keep it together. Like the, the, the effect of being shot, of hearing a gunshot go off at close range and then hit it, having that hit you and realizing you're bleeding does not cause you to start to like crack your sanity yet. Um, uh, I'm going to roll... What is your physique there, Victoria? Um, it's a nine. Lord Edward tries to knock your hand away and you end up bringing his... Well, let me... How bad is it? 
Uh, yeah, Lord Edward tries to knock your hand away uh, and fails to do so. Um, and uh, actually has a crit fail. Do you want to knock him down or shoot him? Um, I kind of want still him alive. So yeah, I'm just going like, to hit him with the butt of the pistol and just say like, sorry, Lord Edward, I need you for your beating heart and your life body. I don't need you for the scintillating conversation. Uh, the other guard tries to come after you. Um, Victoria or? Alistair. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> you have to be more specific. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. Alistair, <laughs> shooting you, the other guard succeeds in shooting you. Uh, why don't you roll? Oh, I'll do it. Sorry. Alistair, you're going to take eight vitality damage. I'm at zero, so t too tough to die kicks in. Okay. What does too tough to die do for people at home? Upon reaching zero vitality, the tough immediately gains 1d6 plus level vitality points. Uh, do you want to throw that d6? Yeah. That is a total of six vitality points on me now. Right. All right. Yeah. Uh... So you are somehow still standing, even though you've now been shot twice. Um, <laughs> you are miraculously still holding on. What is your uh, physique? Alistair? Yeah. Uh, 11. 11? Yes. Um, You lose three of those vitality as the other guard tries to punch you. Um, the one you're like in, you know, melee range with that you tried to tackle. Yeah. Um, Julieta tries to make a run for it and starts to bolt out. Um, Victoria, what do you do? Um, I think I kind of yell to get the guard's attention. And hopefully they, uh, I go like, hey, 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 would you, would, would you kind fellows stop beating up my friend? Or I guess I'll test just to see how loyal you are to your dear boss. And I point the pistol at Lord Edward's head. Um... They freeze. Otto, what are you doing? Um, the sister and I are making a, 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 a trying to make out of the make it out of the hill. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. So we're now we're just running as fast as we can. I didn't want to get into that altercation with my measles two <laughs> vitality point. I'm going to check in with you again next round as you get to the bottom of the hill. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. So. Well, actually, why don't you make an agility check? You are running in the increasing, increasing darkness. Sure. I rolled a 10, and I think I just reduced my my agility to 10. Yeah, that's a success. Okay. It's a critical success. Yeah, you keep yeah. the sister from falling over at several points and make good time as, like, you're able to, able to jump some of the, like, switchback turns. 
up the hill. Um, and uh, it's darker on the this side of the hill. This, the side of the hill you're on is opposite the setting sun. And you're like it's already the sun. The sun is already dipped below the horizon. So there, there's, as you know, having been outside after the sun has dipped below the horizon, there's still you know another hour of light. But if you were in the wrong place at the wrong time, it's going to be very very dim light. Um, and on the far side of this hill, it's very very shadowy. Um, and if you know the trees all around don't help. Um, If you've ever been in the forest, even close to sunset, even an hour before sunset, you know that the forest is significantly darker than the world around it. Um, so um, you are heading out of down the hill. Um, let's have everybody make an agility check again. All right. One. Uh, I got 12 under 14. I rolled another critical. Uh, one is not a success this turn, unfortunately. But everybody else should be good. Uh, Alistair, I think you are sort of tossed back as the ground begins to break. Otto, you get to the bottom of the hill and the, the two people there stationed there as guards are, are, are standing with Edith, sort of looking around confused, going, what's going on up there? We thought we heard screaming. It's terrifying, don't get close to there. Um, I was just going to sit in the car down here. All right. You hear one of them definitely under his breath go, I'm not paid to go up there. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, um, yeah, I'm just trying to avoid it, like to prevent them from coming up and like re adding like reinforcements to Lord Edward's guards. Victoria, the two people on you have frozen, but the ground underneath the throne begins to crack. <laughs> as a hand uh, comes through. I'm going to need you to make a sep second agility check. Oh, lovely. Hands from the ground. All right. Uh, that's a four. Um, it's like 10 under. Something that looks like a, a decorative gargoyle, but very, very large breaks through the ground and pulls itself up. Um, and it looks around and goes like, there's supposed to be something to eat when you call me. And it looks uh, at the air. There's nothing here to eat. So the circle doesn't bind. What do you do? Oh, God. Um, can I see where Alistair is? Alistair is struggling with one of the, the guards. He's been shot a couple of times. Okay. Um, I'm going to... <laughs> 
I want to call it that guard to like stop beating the fuck out of Alistair, but the, uh, everything they've all stopped. Yeah, based oh, on okay. your, like aiming a gun at Lord Lord Edward. Okay. All right, because Miss Victoria can't help herself. She's gonna shout out. <laughs> Hungry for anything? It's part of the contract. Well, looks like whoever you made a contract with isn't hasn't lived up to their side of the deal. What are you going to do about it? Then I take what I want. And he's like reaches out with his foot and kicks the salt and water away, the salt and mud away that had the circle around the throne. Right. And that's indiscriminate, right? <laughs> um, that's whatever's here, right? What, I'm sorry? That's, I think uh, Victoria is stammering, saying like, that's, so whatever you want is, whatever's around here, I presume. <laughs> Whatever it is, I find. And he starts to look around at the city around him. Oh, shit. <laughs> Would you... what, what were you contracted to eat? What's, uh, what... Maybe you can find an, uh, an alternative. They called me. They provide me a meal for me to show up. Does it matter what meal it is? Which person? What do I care? Do you course, care course, which yeah. chicken or turkey you eat? No, frankly, no. It's, I suppose... Um, do I see where Julieta is? Uh, Julieta is well. bolted away. Okay, all right. So the guards are watching this horror show, I assume. Yeah. <sighs> Would you prefer um, old conservative, crispy from being a right toss pot of a firebrand. Uh, you get the feeling he's done talking. Okay. All right. Well, uh, well, have a first meal on me. Uh, have fun with the rest of these, and I'm going to kick Lord Edward towards it and run to get Alistair. Why don't you make a physique check? Oh, my physique. Why? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Difficulty will be two. Ooh, so my physics is a nine and I rolled a six. You are within the difficulty and below your physique. Uh, Lord Alistair, or sorry, Lord Edward goes sprawling forward and is grabbed by the creature. Uh, Alistair and... Alistair and uh, Victoria both make willpower checks. I'm going to test my luck to see if I can lower that shit. And I do lower it to a critical again. Nice. Yeah, same. I'm going to test my luck because <laughs> I think... Yeah, uh, I rolled 13. That's not good. Um, ooh, so I rolled a four. What does that mean? I have a luck of four. Is that... Uh... You have a luck of four now, don't you? Yeah. Yes. Then you can adjust it by up to four. Wow. Okay. So I can get a critical <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh, the two of you hold it together as it grabs Lord Edward opens its mouth 
by distending its jaw as if its jaws were not attached and if its face was made of some sort of stretchy latex material and then clump down on his face. Not his head, his face. Um, uh, as you hear Lord Edward scream, but he's screaming into the maws of this gargoyle-like creature. Uh, one of the guards just runs away, and you think you hear him on the ground coughing uh, a few feet away. The other is still there, trembling hands, crying uh, with his gun pointed at everyone and everything, you know, depending on which split second as he sort of waves it around. Alistair, what are you doing? Run the fuck away, I guess. <laughs> uh, Victoria, are you doing the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm going towards Alistair. So I'm like, yeah, let's... That's fucking bold. How far do you run? Uh, as fast as, as we can. As which... far away as we can, yeah. <laughs> First yeah. The road. Which is tricky for me because I don't usually try to run in dresses, but... Right. Just rip your dress. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, dude, it's not mine. and it's not. It wasn't sisters anyway. <laughs> Most of the other people up here are also running. And we are at 11.25, so I think what I would like to do now, since I would like to get... How do each of you spend the evening? Sleep is not going to come easily. Um, Otto, you have not seen everything they've seen. So how do you spend, when you, when you arrive back at the manor an hour, and a, you know, an hour later or so, how do you spend the evening? As people, mm. on the, as people on the, in the fashionable district are already spreading rumors about weird things happening at the city park. Oh. Hill. Otto uh, brings the sister to uh, the the manor mm -hmm. and instructs guards to protect her. And uh, goes back to his room, sits at his desk, and. cries very hard because like she didn't expect Matthias to, to act the way he did. He doesn't even know if Matthias is alive, like given all the like the nightmarish rumors. And yeah, like yeah, Otto thinks he did the right thing, but uh it's it's very hard to think either of the consequences or like what led to that. Yeah. Alistair. How Alistair you, is going to, sorry. Go ahead. How do you spend that night? Alistair is going to get patched up because he is at a three out of 13 vitality and he took two fucking gunshots at, at least. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and finally, Victoria. Uh, I think Victoria stops by for a minute in the senator's house to pick up a new, <laughs> another coat of hers, but she's too tired to like get out of the torn evening gown and she's going to slink off to the the boozier side of the city partially to just get drunk and partially to try and find Roscoe. When you find Roscoe, what are you up to? And I think I'm just going to like slump down next to him and say, 
You fucking owe me one. The next day... You wake up to news that one of the capital's treasure houses has had the side ripped off. And beggars initially made off with a, like a, a significant portion of the funds were made off with. But uh, everything else inside it has been sort of rag picked by the time the guard discovered what had happened. Um, And, uh, you know, everybody on the, in the fashionable district is complaining about poor people having money and what they'll do with it and how poorly they will spend it. Uh, that none of them appreciate the treasures. Uh, none of them appreciate the old coins. None of them appreciate the history. Um, Matthias does, towards the end of the summer festival, send you a telegram. Otto. Yeah. And it's solely like, Edward knew about us. <laughs> oh, that was low, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Okay. I need a moment. <laughs> uh, and then ask to see you at the normal place. Yeah, well, yeah, Otto will go, yeah. You are right to continue? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was just like, yeah, it was a lot. I was like, I'm, I'm feeling very emotional today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm, I, it's always like this. I always, uh, I always cry at season finales. And... Oh. <laughs> yeah. Leandro knows. Yeah. But Leandro routinely reduces people to tears, so. <laughs> um, he's looking rather chastened when you arrive. Mm -hmm. And I think it yeah. was mentioned in the first session that it's, it's, it's a place that affords you some privacy. Yeah. And a place known for discretion. Almost like one of those places where you have like a semi-private room mm -hmm. when, you, when you go to dinner. What do you tell him? Uh, Otto says... Matthias this is important, like being together is important. But do you think it's worth that much? Do you think it's worth the, the, the safety and the freedom of all these people? I don't know. I'm, I'm asking you because I don't know the answer. Do you want me to resign? I think we need to leave with Ayas. I think we both need to leave. And he just nods and he says, I've made arrangements. Alistair 
Sister Pierce informs you she's going to go into retreat away from the Abbey into the country for a time. That is super understandable. <laughs> that is way more than understandable. What do you go discuss with Singer? I think I just <laughs> fucking tell him the entire story because, oh my god, so much shit happened. He looks a little shocked that uh, that what he signed was what you're saying he signed. Yeah. I think his words to you, final ones, are what what does Roscoe have on me now? I don't know. And you can see he's sort of shaking as he uh, tries to sort of go about the business of running the bar for the last... 30 minutes before you guys have can leave. Victoria. When Roscoe admit, finally admits he owes you a favor, what is it you ask? Because I think his words are, I owe you a favor, but only one. We can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. Yet more suspense. While uh, Landro's m muted, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, ask if Otto could have like a little thing before we finish. Because there's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to definitely give everybody sort of a closing sort of. Yeah, I just, checked my, I just checked my notes. <laughs> Is <Okay>. there something? <laughs> Landro, can you talk now? Can you? I still can't hear you. Try checking the headphone, your headset. If you pushed a button that maybe you shouldn't have. Oh, never mind. All right. Checking your cables. And then check to see if you get input on, if you're getting input on uh, any other. Okay, leave and re-enter probably sounds like a best idea. I feel like we should have hold music.
Hello. We can hey, Andrew, hear you. we can hear you. There you are. Hey. Yeah, hey. So the Sorry question was, that. when Roscoe admits he owes you one favor, what's the favor you ask? I think uh, Victoria probably could have asked for something that I'll give her a leg up or some big favor, but instead she kind of like sheepishly rubs her neck and it's like, Do you remember place me and me and Rosemary had the ones you kind of pointed out a direction. Ah, I kind of lost the key to that place. You don't happen to have a spare. You'll have it tomorrow morning. <sighs> Thanks. I'm going to like drown myself in beer. <laughs> or at least down this one pint in front of me. Let's do a quick epilogue for each character. And I know Otto has an idea. So let's, what's our closing scene with Otto? Otto and Matthias are ready to leave town. So there's a, there's a, a little like uh, wagon uh, pulled by horses where the like in there where they're moving uh, together, but like in a sneak, in sneak a sneaky way. But as the as the wagon crosses the 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 this street uh Otto says uh, there's one there's one thing he still he still has to do here and uh, so he he asks uh, the, the person to bring the wagon back to the manor and knocks at uh, Victoria's door she answers and she just opens the door I thought you'd gone Otto what's up uh, I am leaving, but uh, before I go, there's uh, someone who wants to talk to you. I think uh, Victoria doesn't say anything, but she just kind of nods slowly. She doesn't trust herself to say anything. Yeah. Uh, Otto, Otto sits at the, like inside uh, Victoria's uh, room and uh, as he sits on the chair like his eyes kind of turn like up and then white and he start he speaks in a, in a tone that reminds you of rosemary uh like uh, uh that's that's all like yeah I, I don't know if you, if you want to have a chat with Rosemary, we can do it, or we can just leave it at that. Yeah, we can leave it there. All right. That's fine. Let's go to Victoria. What's the last scene in which we see Victoria? Yeah, well, it was going to be way more dour until Otto came in with that save, um, <laughs> for sure. Um... Yeah, I think it's. You come back to me now. Now I have to think of a new one. <laughs> I had one ready, but then it. I can get Alistair. Fit. Yeah. Alistair, what's the last scene in which we see Alistair? I think Alistair is uh, getting ready to leave town as well because he was called back by his father. Well, not called back by his father. His father can, uh, passed away. And he has to take uh, take care of the things in the Featherfield house. So headed back up north to the towns from which you came. And finally, Victoria. I think after that chat with Rosemary, Victoria's in high spirits. I think she sees off Otto and Matthias. She thinks she also sees off Alistair. So they're probably not leaving the same day, but it's probably much like seeing them off. 
Mm-hmm. And I think the last shot we get of her is uh, watching them leave like through the gates, <sighs> sighing like not like not like a sad sigh, more like a oh, there's so much to be done here, I guess. I can, like tightens her cap and back into the city, letting it swallow her whole. Nice. Thank you all. Thank you to our audience at home for watching with us. And we're going to debrief here. And I think we're going to stop the recording. Bye, internet. <laughs>